from the war-torn skies over Kosovo, 800 squadron were home and they were letting everybody know about it. When they set off from here in January, they headed for the Gulf, where they helped to enforce the no-fly zone over southern Iraq. That mission over, they were about to come home at Easter when they were deployed to the Adriatic. From the carrier HMS Invincible, they flew in a defensive role for attacking aircraft, ready to take on any Serbian MiGs. All of us got to see um, other aircraft, uh, enemy aircraft, airborne, uh, and all of us got to uh, head towards them. But as I was explaining to the newspaper, uh, there are rules of engagement for Western democracies, and we were never put in a position where we were actually allowed to open fire. For the waiting families, the unpredictability and constant worry of husbands and fathers involved in the real thing has become a way of life. But that makes the welcome home that much sweeter. Ahead of them now, three weeks leave. Richard Lytton, Sky News, Yeovilton. Now with news from Kosovo into Albania after being released by the Serb authorities. The men were among a group of about 2,000 who were detained earlier this month. Several described being rounded up by Serb forces while travelling in a refugee column several weeks ago. Some said they were beaten, others that they'd received only bread and water. NATO's bombing of Yugoslavia continues with targets hit including at least nine armoured vehicles, ten artillery positions and tanks. A senior leader of the Kosovo Liberation Army has meanwhile called for the bombardment to be stepped up even further in spite of yesterday's NATO attack on a KLA position near the Albanian border. Aid workers say the men were in a worse physical state than any they'd seen cross the border since NATO's air war began, but at least they were alive. They came in their hundreds, tired, undernourished, but thankful their ordeal was over. These men are part of a group of 2,000 released by the Serbian authorities after detention in a school. Some were also held in a prison. The men were snatched from a refugee convoy about five weeks ago by Serb paramilitaries. Ever since, their loved ones have been wondering if they were dead or alive. The men have now spent a relatively comfortable night in refugee tents, and some of them spoke of their ordeal. These men told me they were regularly beaten and given little food. They were also ordered to shout, long live Slobodan Milosevic. The men who crossed the border yesterday have been told that they can stay in this area while the all-important task of trying to reunite them with loved ones begins. Well, we can go now live to Kukesh in Albania, where we're joined by Susan Manuel of the World Food Programme. Susan Manuel, just how poor a condition are this latest group of refugees in? Well, they're the first people we've seen uh, during this crisis who show signs of true emaciation. Uh, people talk of having lost uh, 30, 40 kilograms, and they had a very spare diet of uh, just 100 kilograms twice a day of bread, according to the prisoners I interviewed, ex-prisoners I interviewed. Do you think this group are a special case, or do you think they are indicative of many thousands more uh, Kosovo uh, Albanians uh, still in the province who are seriously undernourished? Well, I've been interviewing uh, dozens of people a day for a month, and the Albanians of Kosovo had stored food, and so we do not see signs of malnutrition. The, the Albanians coming across the border in the last couple of weeks who've been living in the hills, they have been eating a very poor diet of maize and water or bread and water, but uh, they're still in a state that we would call basically healthy. These are the first people we've seen who uh, are truly emaciated, and the way they greeted the food yesterday showed that they were extremely hungry. It's some days now since we heard of efforts by bombing a strategic position held by the separatist Kosovo Liberation Army, the KLA. The alliance said it thought the hilltop near the Albanian border was being held by the Yugoslav military. Day 60 of the conflict, and from the Aviano Air Base in Italy, NATO launches its thousandth sortie. Clear skies over the Balkans have enabled the alliance to intensify the bombing of Yugoslavia like never before. But as the strike rate increases, so do the mistakes. NATO's latest embarrassment is the bombing of this building, close to the Albanian border. Alliance planners thought it was a Yugoslavian army base, but over a month ago it was taken over by the Kosovo Liberation Army, or UCK. Recently, the rebels were happy to show the BBC their new stronghold, but apparently nobody told NATO it had changed hands. Uh, if we had known 
uh, in a very dynamic situation, particularly where the UCK is extremely active in that part, that it had been captured by the uh, UCK, then it would have been taken off the target list. The Alliance has also been asked to clarify why America is suggesting that the number of NATO troops in Macedonia be doubled to 50,000. There's been speculation that this marks the beginnings of a ground war and that these soldiers are being assembled not to escort refugees back into Kosovo, but to invade. Not so, says the Pentagon. There's been absolutely no change in NATO's thoughts about this and there's been no change in the United States' thoughts about this either. Uh, all the support is for a peacekeeping force and there is no intention of any other type of force now. But the timetable of the refugees' return seems to be slipping. Originally, the plan was to get them back before winter. Now the talk is of preparing their temporary camps for the winter weather. One NATO official says that once peace is established in Kosovo, it could still be another two years before all the refugees go home. The Serbs, when they evicted the people, from Kosovo have done tremendous damage to the, particularly the outlying villages and have gutted most of the homes. That will take time to repair. Uh, my experience from Bosnia was even two years later, many of the houses had not been repaired. An estimated 800,000 refugees have now left Kosovo. Even if a military or diplomatic solution to this crisis is found soon, they look set to become its lasting legacy. Stephen Gibbs, BBC News. They had been imprisoned as rebel suspects by the Serbs. Some still wore handcuffs. Many said they'd been beaten. Most were exhausted and undernourished. Aid workers say many more are expected and they're trying to reunite the men with their families. Sky's Chris Roberts has been talking to some of those who arrived unexpectedly at the border last night. When the Serbs ripped his son from his arms and marched him off to a prison cell, Agim Payaziti was sure he would never see his family again. He was held for almost a month, accused of being a soldier in the Kosovo Liberation Army. His wife and children fled south to Albania, almost convincing themselves their husband and father was dead. The children came running through the camp, crying, Daddy's back, Daddy's back, says Agim's wife. I couldn't believe it. It's a miracle. Hundreds of Kosovar Albanian men are arriving here after their Serbian captors suddenly allowed them to leave. They claim they were beaten daily and kept in appalling conditions in makeshift prisons. Where were men's been very tortured. We slept in the floor without blankets. We, we used our jackets as a blanket. Uh, the food was very bad. They give us a uh, little bread and some potatoes soup, but it was very low quality. The names of those who survived are posted throughout the refugee camps, along with details of families who've come through this town after fleeing Kosovo. Reuniting them all could take weeks or even months. Tens of thousands of young men are still missing inside Kosovo after they were arrested by the Serbs. The release of these prisoners, however, gives hope to a countless number of families who thought they'd never see their sons, husbands and fathers alive again. Chris Roberts, Sky News, in Kukes, Northern Albania. Well, Sky is still... Food. They hardly gave them any anyway, but food and water could have been short. They may have wanted to um, redeploy soldiers elsewhere, it's, it's unclear. Certainly, uh, the refugees believe that they were sent as a sort of message. They say that they're meant to come out, spread terror amongst the refugees who are here so that they won't ever go home. Though I would point out that every single person I've spoken to has said they will go home. But at the moment, they're just trying to find their families, and it's uh, pretty tough for them still. I suppose also it may be... I'm sure take time to get absolutely everybody home. And the question, of course, of how quickly the collapse of the Serb aggression takes place. My own instinct is that when the collapse comes it'll come very fast but if if it comes very fast then the troops go in and then there's a question of how many mines and nobody really knows that either so there'll be a process of return of making things safe of people within the country getting back into their homes there'll be a stage when we have to get food water plastic sheeting so that they can start to reconstruct their houses the whole process will take some years but the beginnings of people coming home will start very quickly i think in other developments, NATO has admitted its warplanes mistakenly attacked a barracks captured by the KLA from the Serbs last month. The Kosovo Liberation Army says seven fighters were killed and 25 wounded, but they're urging NATO not to give up the airstrikes. 
Britain and the United States have restated this morning that NATO will stick to its air war strategy to defeat Yugoslavia, despite plans for a massive troop build-up along the Kosovo border in Macedonia. The message from Britain this morning is that we want a diplomatic solution, but it must be a solution that makes Kosovo safe for the return of the refugees. We want peace, but only a peace that meets NATO's objectives. And those objectives are all geared to the security of Milosevic's innocent victims. Victims like, for example, the 500 missing men who've emerged from captivity overnight. NATO bombing plunged Belgrade back into darkness overnight with more attacks on power stations like this one yesterday, which disabled the Kolubara thermal power station. The latest target, early today, was the Obronovic plant, which cut off electricity to large swathes of Serbia, hitting priority users like this maternity hospital, water facilities, transport depots and factory units. NATO normally carry out their raids at high altitude, often using laser-guided bombs, and this strategy has been blamed by critics for civilian deaths when targeting has gone wrong. This has led to speculation today that NATO is switching its strategy because of diplomatic pressure. They report low-flying aircraft. Those could be cruise missiles, which are a form of aircraft and which have been in use since the beginning of the bombing campaign. Um, if they are, really are low-flying manned aircraft, then that would indicate a significant change in tactics. But uh, quite frankly, I don't see the point against targets like that. Um, the main problems that there have been with bombing up to now have been the result of faulty intelligence. As we've seen, uh, they managed to hit a KLA of uh, barracks which had been occupied by the KLA about a month ago. So once again, it's all down to intelligence. Unconfirmed reports say the NATO bombing killed seven KLA fighters in its mistaken attack on their base. Dale Levac, Sky News. <laughs> Kosovska Mitrovica. They said more prisoners had been released and were believed to be heading for the marina border crossing. Our correspondent Clive Myri has spoken to many of the men. He now reports from Kukes on the Albanian border. Misery in the last two months. The last two days have provided some of the cruelest sights of broken men in their hundreds filing by in silence as if they were ghosts. Their ordeal will haunt them forever. The war in Kosovo has spawned unimaginable cruelty if the stories of the men of Mitrovica are to be believed. This man spoke to us but didn't want to give his name. He still has family in Kosovo. They beat us like animals. 48 hours, we didn't have no bread, no water, just staying and waiting. Somebody was sick and calling for help to give some water. Nobody didn't give us. Then every day was calling us with names and beating. Every day. These men have been stripped of everything they had, including their dignity. 
but now they're safe in Albania and being reunited with loved ones who'd crossed the border weeks ago would go a long way to rebuilding shattered lives. Hazir Salimi hasn't seen his wife and five children for a month. He told me that something inside him died when the Serbs took him away from his family, that there are many men here who feel the same way. Many of us, he said, have lost hope of ever seeing our wives and children again. But some of the women of Mitrovica who crossed the border weeks ago haven't given up hope and today began searching for their husbands and sons, fathers and brothers. Women from other parts of Kosovo desperately hoped they'd find their menfolk too. But not today. They took my brother from the tractor, she told me. We've been searching for three weeks to find him. We've heard rumors he's alive, but he's not here. Gani Isufi showed me one of his seven-month-old son's play suits. It's a memento he holds dear. I clung on to the shirt as the Serbs took me away, he said. Thank God I'm alive, but I've no idea if my son is. Clive Myrie, BBC News, in northern Albania. Well, I'm joined. Uh, they're a slightly different group. From, from yesterday. These are people who are taken from their villages for the most part from different places in Kosovo. Um, and otherwise they're telling very much the same story as those from yesterday. There are, as we've been told, some 100,000 Kosovo Albanian men missing and unaccounted for within the province. Are these releases an indication, do you think, of the fate of some of those other men, perhaps, that they have been held or still are being held as these people were? It's terribly hard to say. I mean, I think everything that comes out of Kosovo really only tells you about itself. Um, we now know at least there is this prison, that there were 3,000 men in it, and that one third of them have now come out. Um, but for the rest of the province, we just don't know. Um, there are many, many men who are unaccounted for. Hopefully they're still alive and reasonably well, but it, it, we don't know yet. Will your have entered the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia at the Blatse border crossing. Aid workers are trying to confirm reports that another 5,000 people arrived by train a few hours ago and that they're still at the railhead a kilometre inside Kosovo. In neighbouring Albania, officials at the border say an estimated 4,600 people have arrived from Kosovo in the past three days. The latest arrivals at the Macedonian border talked of Serbian forces purging the regional capital Pristina of its ethnic Albanian population. International aid agencies say that they have several months of food supplies for the refugees. But camps are desperately overcrowded and the Macedonian government says it can't cope with more refugees. It's been trying to keep the number of new arrivals at the same level as the evacuations out of the country. And we'll be talking to our correspondent in Skopje, Paul Wood, in a moment later in the programme. They queue for bread every morning, resigned to their new lives. The stories are sad, repetitious, but they still want to tell them. Ishmet Demai is a music teacher, and until March the 27th, he lived on a big family farm near Petch. Then the army told him to leave. He had been recording his happy rural life on a home video when it was abruptly interrupted. The first half of the tape shows that when we talk about war in Europe, it's so close to home and appalling. The dog, the family car, the combine harvester, like summer in an English village, only this was a year ago. Then on the hills, on the run, the father is the raw protector of his family. The pause button. That's me, he says. This is where I told my children we'd have to live. We live from hour to hour. Hiding, watching, hand shaking. His farm is on the left in flames. When NATO talks about refugees hiding in the hills, these are the people they're referring to. 
Of the 300 people who fled the village on that day, half gave up and surrendered to the Serbs. The Demis didn't. They made it on foot to Montenegro. Just a few weeks ago, the Demi family were models of Europe's rising middle class, but they didn't take much notice of politics. And now they've lost everything, absolutely everything. And instead, they're victims of Europe's latest ethnic conflict. <laughs> And it's still going on. These pictures are of the same route, different family, just a few days ago. The young had gone back into Kosovo to rescue the elderly. The oldest was 83. He didn't want to give his name. Even now, he was frightened of authority. He died shortly after he fell. Another journey, another story, another life from the Kosovo conflict. Humphrey Hawksley, BBC News, Montenegro. In a moment, we hope to... Serbian style. Heavy anti-aircraft fire greeted an equally heavy night of bombing as NATO continued to ratchet up its operations. The power network is now being bombed regularly and NATO is not just using the graphite bombs that provoke a temporary short circuit. This damage is the result of old-fashioned high explosives. But whether NATO troops will ever fire in anger is still being discussed. NATO will consider over the next few days an American plan to reinforce these troops who are exercising in Macedonia. This force is only intended to go into Kosovo after a settlement. But today the British Foreign Secretary spoke of the possibility of sending them in earlier in what they're calling a non-permissive environment. Well, as President Clinton has said, no option has been taken off the table and mm. we must make sure that we are ready to take advantage of, of the success of their campaign when that time comes. And from what we have seen over this past week, that army knows its decline, knows it's losing and is starting to disintegrate. Whatever the truth of those claims, NATO still seems to be struggling to deliver the decisive blow that would force President Milosevic to the negotiating table. John Lyne, BBC News. Well, our aid agencies say that they have several months of food supplies for the refugees, but the camps are desperately overcrowded, and the Macedonian government says it can't cope with more refugees. It's been trying to keep the number of new arrivals at the same level as daily evacuations out of the country. Well, our correspondent Paul Wood joins us now from Skopje, the capital of the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia. Paul, the influx of refugees seems to be on then again with a vengeance. It certainly does. This is the biggest crossings we've seen the, in, in numbers for about a month now. 5,000 yesterday, as many as 8,000 today. UNHCR officials say they're coming from the regional capital, Pristina, from a town called Arushavats in the south, and from the villages around. And some of these people are saying they wanted to leave for various reasons. Others, though, are telling what is now a familiar tale, allegations that they were rounded up at gunpoint and given orders to leave by armed Serbs. Many of these refugees arrived on a train. That indicates that this was organised, perhaps at a quite senior level. And aid workers and diplomats are now wondering if we are indeed seeing a return to the widespread ethnic cleansing which refugees were alleging a month ago. Paul, the
Këtu një mjek. Po, a mund të e punë e të pjallë dhe dhe në që është për atë në përkëtajnë? Gjithë të të. Këtu një mjek, një humanist pinsë, që e kalon betimin e Hipokratit. Po, këtu shi e të ajë nuk ka të bëjmë me Hipokratin, po ka të bëjmë me Hipokritin, do në thonë në të kundrët në nësajnë, një i dejtojt me vla një ushtari, kërkon për tjene, po e them kështu në gjuhën të Hipokrate, sa më jështë nështë do t'i kashëm. O bëjë vesë me katolatësh do nësë o tu dhe jetan shqipta së kjëlesh, dhe ka o vesë i guma në gushu, jërsa të nema një jetë në kostura. Në përkëtë gjudu? Vetëm me dhe të shkatë të të themë. Gjithësësi, kërë